to a new look at millennials and the way they value work and relationships and Shokut's new book, The Big Life, turns the tables on some common misconceptions. I had a chance to sit down with her and a group of millennial women, had a candid conversation about living life on your own terms. I'm not done. I still have goals. It's a genuine partnership. I just have to find a way to do it all. Voices of millennial women carving their own path and living their version of the big life, which author Ann Shokit, as former editor-in-chief of Seventeen magazine, says is game-changing. So I joined one of Ann's signature pizza and rosé dinner parties to dine and dish about ambition, career, and relationships. I thought I know a lot of things about women. I want to continue the conversation with the women who grew up with me into the next phase of their life. And then I started having these conversations and they changed the way I think about young women and their possibility. This for me, yeah. this is my big life, this conversation. Let's bust some myths right now. You hear about millennials, you're entitled. You don't want to put in the work, that you want to be there already. How do you face that? For me, it was a lot of, um, bias towards my age when I first started the business, but that gave me a lot of ammunition and a lot of drive. I was like, I'm gonna prove you wrong. I know I can do this. I will work harder than anybody. I do have to say I got that a lot because I left corporate and I joined as the first employee a startup. And so a lot of people asked, oh, you just didn't wanna climb the corporate ladder. You know, you couldn't stick it out. I was feeling personally just like my creativity was sapped. And so I wanted to go into an environment where I was really inspired. I hope that when I work hard, I can prove myself. There is this huge gulf of misunderstanding between generations, between millennials and the Gen Xers or baby boomers who are their bosses. When they ask for freedom from FaceTime at the office, they want to come in later, work on the weekends, work their own hours. That's making it easier for all of us to have a work-life conversation. How about, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it, Work-life balance. <gasps> work-life balance. <laughs> work-life balance is a sham. It is all work, all the time, all life, all the time. I think the problem with the statement is the word balance is interpreted as 50-50. Things are equal. Mm. And the word balance means something different to everybody. One point I want to make that's really clear is it's not just work-life balance when you have kids, right? That your life is important at every age. However, it certainly gets more complicated, as Stephanie knows, when you have children. She said to me when we met that her goal was to work smarter, not harder. I get an extraordinary amount of fulfillment from being who I am professionally, and having kids didn't replace the desire to have that fulfillment. It just meant that I had time in the day that I had to go somewhere else as well, mm -hmm. and uh, making it all fit. Is it true that through your dinners and through your research that you discovered that sex has been replaced by the drive for success. Robin, I have tried at every dinner to get these women to talk about sex. They're not stressed about it. They're not concerned about it. It just happens. Yeah, those kind of sex in the city conversations have disappeared. I think I'm still having the sex in the city conversations. Yeah. Like my group text should not be seen <laughs> by anybody. <laughs> like, I mean, sorry to anybody who's dating my friend group. You know, we're setting our own um, standards and like expectations for what we want to do. There's a greater and, like, sense of confidence. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We're not analyzing sex in that way. It's but you are analyzing the path to success, right? You want to know, yes, you exactly. want to know how does she do it? What yeah. does it happen? How does it go? <laughs> What's her secret? Yeah, more so than when the, talking about yeah. sex, but when it comes to success, you do want to yeah. analyze mm -hmm. it far well, it more. Like we cracked the code on sex. Now we know how to talk about it. So we need something else. Yeah. <laughs> so, but Caitlin came to one of my dinners and articulated more clearly than I've ever heard anyone say before about the challenge that you feel in finding a partner when you're an ambitious woman. Well, I had said to Anne at the time that I just wished I could find a guy who cared about anything as much as I care about everything. So like, <laughs> with my work and with my personal life and with my family, I'm surrounded by really passionate women all day long. The big question is how do you find a partner who honors your ambition, right? I found someone who had a lot of interests, um, almost as many as me. I was looking actually for someone who I could talk to about my passions and then I could see that light in their eyes and they wanted to also share something back with me. The bottom line is I look at each and every one of you and there is no way that you are not going to get everything you want in life. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. To the big life. To the big life.
and The Big Life is out now.